Hey everyone, Cy Venom here with AWS. Now, here at AWS, we're committed to giving customers choice, especially when it comes to running containers at scale. Now, we've gotten a lot of positive feedback about the experiences that we've built on AWS Cloud, but customers want to leverage the power of AWS when running in on-premises environments. Now, today we're going to be focusing on EKS, Elastic Kubernetes Service, and two ways that customers can leverage EKS to run containers on-premises. Those are going to be EKS running on an AWS outpost, as well as EKS anywhere. Let's get started with the foundation of an outpost. So an outpost is going to be AWS supplied and managed hardware. Essentially what I mean by that is that uh, AWS is going to be able to do, and, and rather is going to do, uh, the security patches and keeping the infrastructure up to date uh, when, and when running in uh, an outpost-based environment. An outpost in many ways can be considered an extension of an AWS region. Uh, in addition, this is going to be hardware that you'll need to obtain directly from AWS. Switching gears here a little bit, let's look at EKS Anywhere. And one of the critical distinct, uh, distinctions here is that it's going to be actually running on your hardware. Uh, essentially, uh, this means that for customers that have already invested in some hardware, this can be a key decision point if they want to be able to continue to use that hardware for running EKS uh, or running containers in an on-premises environment. Now today, if you want to run production workloads on EKS Anywhere, we support VMware vSphere, which is a virtualization platform. Uh, but very soon, we're looking to also support bare metal as well as the Snow family of AWS devices. Now for non-production workloads, you can basically run EKS anywhere, anywhere, and that includes on your local machine. Uh, there's a great way to kind of get started very quickly with EKS anywhere. Uh, let's kind of shift gears again and talk a little bit about outposts. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about is the connectivity modes that both of these support, because I think that really frames the discussion for how they're different. So with an outpost, you really need fixed connectivity. Uh, and, and essentially, we talked about this a little bit already with it being an extension of an AWS region. AWS needs to be able to communicate with the infrastructure to do things like those security patches. Uh, but critically, the, it also uh, affects the EKS architecture as well. Uh, and in addition, in an outpost, you can deploy more than just EKS. You can deploy things like S3, EBS, RDS, uh, and, and a number of other services you can launch directly in uh, the, the outpost itself. But let's bring this back to EKS for a minute and go through an example. Let's say as an operator, I want to actually manage uh, a cluster. I want to administer, operate an EKS cluster. So let's see what that looks like. So the first thing as an operator, uh, when running EKS on an outpost, you would use the same standard set of APIs that you would be if you were running EKS on uh, AWS Cloud. Uh, and so those same standard set of APIs are going to be exposed to the operator. And this is what's uh, essentially going to enable them to communicate with the control plane. And here we've got the control plane. It's going to be running on EC2. And this is going to let us communicate to the data plane. So let's see how that works. So through that fixed connectivity model, this connectivity, uh, this control plane will talk to uh, the worker nodes that are running in the outpost itself. So the workers are here, and this essentially is the EKS component running on the outpost. So you can kind of see uh, that's this extended cluster architecture with the control plane managed by AWS. Uh, you're responsible for the worker nodes running on your on-premises hardware, and you have that fixed connectivity that's essentially required. Now let's switch gears here a little bit and look at EKS Anywhere. Now the connectivity modes that are supported here are going to be a little bit more flexible. So here you can have you know, a permanent connect, uh, connection. You can have uh, a disconnected mode here. And you can even do partial connectivity. So to really explain why uh, this is possible with EKS Anywhere, I think we need to take a step back and talk about what exactly EKS Anywhere is. Uh, EKS Anywhere is an open source capability. And so uh, one of the first things uh, I want to talk about that's part of this open source capability is EKS Distro. 
EKS distro is a distribution of Kubernetes, and it's the same one that we use on AWS, and it's open source, by the way. Uh, so EKS Anywhere comes with EKS distro, plus a number of opinionated uh, packages, you know, open source capabilities to help you manage your on-premises environment. So let's take a look at some of those. So let's say that, for example, obviously you're going to need a CLI to work with it, but in addition, maybe something like Flux. So this is something we support for uh, automating some of the operation tasks with an on-premises EKS cluster, things like editing the number of worker nodes. So let's go back to our example here. Let's say that as an operator, you know, I'm working against, I'm um, using these tools, and this is gonna let me uh, administer my cluster. So, you know, using the CLI or some of the automation capabilities, uh, I kind of reach into my cluster here, and you'll notice one of the key differences here. We're gonna have the control plane running on-premises, which in turn, will talk to the worker nodes, which are also on-premises. So this is kind of why we can have this flexible connectivity. Uh, essentially here, you can even do an air gap deployment where you don't necessarily ever need to communicate back to AWS. And so why would we even have these multiple connectivity modes, you might ask? Uh, for example, this fully connected or partially connected? Well, uh, customers want a way to leverage the power of AWS when running in these environments. Uh, and, and so we created something called the EKS connector. This is essentially gonna enable uh, customers to leverage uh, essentially EKS and some of the standard APIs we have available here uh, to, to do a number of things. So let's kind of see how that works, right? So, uh, you know, data from the worker nodes here would kind of go through the connectivity modes available uh, and, and basically talk to EKS running in the cloud. Now, uh, that operator, they can use the same standard set of APIs, kind of that we talked about before with EKS on an outpost, uh, to communicate to EKS. So what's the point of this? Well, today you can use this to get a single pane of glass view. That's right, you can see your EKS clusters uh, running, you know, EKS Anywhere clusters running alongside your EKS clusters uh, on AWS in the console. So for now, it's that visibility that you get. Uh, one thing I want to be clear about, we're not necessarily streaming any application data itself. The workloads kind of run uh, contained in this environment. We're really streaming just the metadata about the objects, the deployments, the Kubernetes constructs, and that enables us to get that visibility. Uh, in the future, we're actually looking to add more interesting support here, things like support for app mesh, or maybe you want to route all of your logs coming from your applications into a central place running on AWS. Uh, I'm really excited for the future of EKS Connector and kind of what it enables for EKS Anywhere deployments. Next, I want to talk a little bit about support. Now, we've said this before and I'll say it again, uh, an AWS outpost it's like an extension of an AWS region. And so that same support you get with uh, EKS running in the cloud, you're, you're essentially covered. You have support when running EKS on an outpost. Now with EKS Anywhere, it's an open source capability. So you'll need to get support through a subscription. But there's something really interesting here. So we'll support not just the EKS distro, the Kubernetes distribution itself, but we'll also support the opinionated flows with some of the, the capabilities that we bundle with it. And that includes the, the GitOps-based approach with Flux, uh, the CNI, the Container Network Interface, which is Cilium, uh, as well as operating systems like Bottle Rocket, as well as Ubuntu. Uh, so with that support uh, mechanism through that subscription, you, you're kind of opinionated, those open source capabilities are supported as well. This can be really criti critical for customers looking for support when running uh, containers in Kubernetes in an on-premises environment. Now, you might have noticed a theme here that's kind of emerging, and that's one of simplicity versus flexibility. Now, with EKS running on an outpost, you get simplicity. It's managed hardware, it's managed infrastructure at the end of the day, the control plane is managed, but you have a fixed connectivity mode. Uh, it's kind of one of those caveats, and you're working with AWS managed supplied hardware. Now, on the other hand here with EKS Anywhere, you get flexibility. Uh, you get flexibility at the cost of additional operational overhead. 
But the thing is you can plug and play with open source capabilities. You can administer both the control plane and the worker nodes. It's your hardware and you have flexible connectivity modes, which can be really critical for air gap deployments, uh, such as in some edge environments where connectivity might be kind of rough. Uh, and, and so you're, you're, you're giving up some of that uh, simplicity uh, for flexibility. Um, but at the end of the day, I think it's really a trade-off between the two. Uh, I really hope today's video helped you understand a little bit better between the differences uh, with EKS Anywhere versus EKS running on an AWS Outpost, uh, and hopefully helps you make the right decision for your business. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to stay tuned for more videos like this in the future. Thank you.